There were a lot of conversations that were started with me that wanted to lead me down a place of doom and gloom and woe and concern for the future of Burning Man. But what I told each person was that I am optimistic. I am encouraged. I am excited by the number of people that know about this. Because it is a magical place. It has a magical energy. The, the momentum of the participants cannot be stopped by a few people who don't get it. The supportive vibe, the fertile petri dish that, that encourages support, that encourages heart songs to be sung, that encourages people to feel and be their inner artist, is profound and stronger than ever. And if it's more accessible to go to Burning Man now, good. More people will have access to the opening up of their hearts and the, the, the birthing of their true selves. My mom came for the first time, 71 years old, and I got to share Burning Man with her. And I had an experience leading the pink ride, which is the highlight of my year. This year we had, I don't know, 150, 200 people maybe? And first I gave a talk, and we were all dressed in pink, and my mom got to see me do it in front of the full house of people. And I cried, and a lot of us cried, and she cried. And I got to call her out and had everyone applaud her. And then we led the parade. And we all got on our bikes and we rode to center camp and there was this ribbon of pink uh, as far as I could see. Each of us saying, I love you, I love you to the people we passed. And my mom, was leading the parade with me. And it was the state of Burning Man as it is today that gave her the courage to come out. To give me this experience to share with her. To go to center camp and feel it, feel it with pink clothed, open-hearted, loving people. Maybe you were there and you know how magical it was. If we had one more person, it would have been too many. We were filled at our camp. And I have an experience like that. And how can I help but not be inspired, encouraged? I think everybody on that ride felt something. And all of those people know people and talk to people and talk to people. There were hundreds of us. How many plug and play camps could possibly dim that pink light? My mom called me when I was decompressing in Reno to thank me for the experience. And I told her that leading the pink ride with her was one of the highlights of my entire life. And she said, me too. After 17 years, I'm still having my heart blown open. I still feel inspired. I still feel hope. I still know that it takes work. I still know that I'm going to keep making videos and keep trying to preach the principles and keep trying to share what's so dear and precious to me. But I feel like I'm surrounded by an army of love warriors. People I never met building things that I may not have even seen. 
After 17 years, I saw two of the most profound burns that I've ever experienced this year. The embrace burn, which happened in the daytime, which was a new and amazing thing to see. You never see the black of the smoke because it's a night sky, but the blue sky, white cloud, black smoke, orange flame, the wood, the playa, the colors, and the gathering in the daylight of so many people in the city. I still feel like it's all new and it's all amazing and it's all mind blowing. And then the temple burn. And I know that sometimes it's hard to stay for that and it, you wanna get back to your life and clean your stuff and decompress for getting back to your responsibilities. But the temple burn this year hit me harder than I've ever been hit. And I, if you're not familiar with the temple, the temple is a structure that is gorgeous and it is unheard of man hours go into the construction of it. This year's was uh, designed by David Best and, and it's, it's done with raw wood so that people can write on it. So even after the artistry of the construction is done, the artistry of personal expression goes in and people write notes to people that they've lost and things that they need to say to themselves or to other people. And this heartfelt expression happens that is unique in the world, I think. I don't, I've never experienced that depth of honest, heartfelt expression and the pain that you see on the walls and the love that you see on the walls. It becomes a sacred, powerful place. It's covered in pictures. There were all these pictures of Robin Williams that people had brought and people that you never met and, but were so important to somebody and pets. And and I don't know what she wrote, but I know my mom wrote something on the temple. And when at the end of the week, it's filled with all of these thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of people's hearts and pain and loss. And then when they light it, it becomes an artistic expression unlike anything that I've ever seen except for a temple burn at Burning Man, which is this thousands upon thousands of people communally purging, expressing, and the fire, and the tears. And this time I was hit so hard I lost control. I was hands open, tears not pouring down my face. I just, and it was so gorgeous, and it was so perfect, and it was so, it wasn't painful, it was just intense in that way of this reminder of like what a gift it is to be human and feel, what a gift it is to ride this roller coaster, to have the joys and the sorrows and the pains, what a gift this is and what an incredible gift to do so amongst others and to share that journey. And I've had all those sorts of people as I've expressed some of my pain as I've been trying to get back into the world and the depression that often hits me after Burning Man and people are trying to say, oh, do this to feel better or, you know, chin up. And I was like, you know what, I'm okay with this. I actually feel kind of good in this suffering. I know it's temporary. I know it's the dip of the ride. There was a time when I suffered from depression and I needed medical help, and I needed chemical help, and at those times, I did not, I could not see that the ride would ever go back up. But I know it does now. I know that this is not an experience of depression. This is an experience of humanity. And this experience as a human being, the duality that I have chosen in this body is all about the intensity of the ride. And so in this ache, 
I'm grateful for the treasure. In the darkness, the bright lights of the last week are so brilliant. And the awareness of the gift of, of this life, the awareness of the gift of these relationships, these relationships, the relationship, or the awareness of the capacity of love that inevitably fills any emptiness that I feel. I treasure these tears because that's what makes me feel and open the connection to you, to this, to all of it. So thank you to everyone who put your artistic creative energy into the creation of Burning Man, your camp, a smile, a conversation, an art piece, some music, everyone that visited our camp, everyone that I got to hug, thank you, what a gift to share so much love. Someone once in my camp said, wow, you, you, you give so much. I go, oh my gosh, I receive so much. I feel so energized by the love here. I am without adequate words to express my gratitude. Please know that I'm so thankful for you. I'm so grateful for who you are and how you shine your light. I love who you are. I love who you're becoming. I'm honored to share the path with you. I love you. Let's have a hug. So wherever you are, grab yourself by the shoulders and appreciate this human form, this physical body, this shell that gives you all these sensations, these visuals and sounds and sensory delights lets you view and experience the unfolding of the universe. What a gift this body is. But this body is just a shell. And beneath that is another shell. The shell of your personality and your labels and the roles you play. Sales guy. Republican. Democrat. Activist. Parent. Uncle. Campmate. And each of these roles, that's what makes the game fun. That's what gives you a destination so that you can get in motion and start having adventures. It's your it's like the role you play in a soccer game. Fullback, goalie, forward. And in that role you've got responsibilities and it helps you make sense of it all and it gives you something fun. And you should try hard to play the game. You should get intense. You should sweat. But you should remember when it gets too much that you're in the middle of a game. And this is just a shell. And who you really are is beneath that. Beneath that is this beam of love, this divine light that doesn't shine from you but through you. And when we let that light shine through us, that's our muse speaking. That's when we become an instrument of something larger than us. when things become effortless, we become in the right place at the right time. And when you get frustrated in life, and when you 
get conflict with someone, know that that's the shell layer. That's you clack, clack, clacking shells with somebody. Deep within them, just as within you, is that pure light. You are one. You are the same. And so let's forgive ourselves when we get caught up in our roles, in our shell. Let's forgive everyone else. Just for three breaths together, let's just be the light and feel that light shining through us. Let's inhale through the nose and out through the mouth. Hold it at the top, ready? In through the nose. Two more. Caleb and all the love warriors. Happy Hug Nation. Thank you. I love you. Thank you for who you are and the light you shine. Namaste.